How's it going, everyone? It's Avi from Weatherstorm Draft 1000. And in this video, we're going to forecast how many days each region of the United States will have snow covered this winter. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. So, a key data point we need to take a look at in determining how many days of snow cover each region of the United States will experience this winter is taking a look at the average snowfall patterns during La Nina years. Because typically during La Nina, we see a lot more snowfall throughout the northern portion of the United States and of course much higher snow depth during uh, La Nina year where we typically see the jet stream dip very far south to allow a lot more cold air to keep that snow cover over a, um, a large portion of the northern United States as well as bring additional snowfall along with those jet stream dips and we typically see a little bit less snow cover a little bit far southward where of course it's a little bit warmer and drier when there's a La Nina year but in general for much of the northern United States you're more likely to experience more days of snowfall this of snow cover this winter thanks to the fact that it's more likely going to be colder than average and more likely than not it will be snower than average in, um thanks in part due to this la nina pattern that's expected to stay um this winter for the entirety of the united states so we should expect more jet stream dips and more snowstorms for much of the northern united states and to take a look at the average temperature anomalies during La Nina years, comparing La Nina years to the long term average between 1991 and 2020, we see that majority of the United States experiences cooler than average temperatures, and the cold air is more. Um, exemplified further northward right around the northern midwest where you were on average during the La Nina year um, the northern midwest typically experiences temperatures that are close to four degrees below average during a La Nina year which is definitely huge and will definitely play a major role in terms of how many days of snow cover you're bound to experience because of course the snow is a lot less likely to melt when we see the temperature be as low as what the historical data is stating when it comes to La Nina years comparing the La Nina year to the long um, long term average where we see temperatures that are close to four degrees below average which is quite a huge uh, stark contrast from what the northern midwest typically experiences on an average year and even extending the northeast we experience temperatures that are close to one to two degrees below average which will certainly Certainly help to keep the snow cover from melting this winter which will of course enhance the risk that you'll experience a lot more snow a lot more snow cover um, for a much longer period and of course enhance the chance of snowstorm activity further northward now um, another big thing we're gonna need to take a look at is of course the um, is of course the current snow cover extent because of course that will play a big role in terms of how many days of snow cover you're going to experience in the United States not only because the current amount of snow cover will be um, add will add on to what the to the additional amount of snow days you'll experience later during the winter but when we typically see the snow cover extent a little bit larger earlier during the year or at least during the early part of fall I mean the early part of winter or the late portion of fall that means we're more likely going to experience a weaker polar vortex which would allow the jet stream to dip a lot further southward and bring a lot of that cold air and a lot more snowstorms to the United States thanks to a weaker polar vortex thanks to a weaker amount of instability that's as a result of a higher amount of or, or a larger area of snow extent throughout the northern hemisphere which reduces instability which reduces the westerly winds which will allow the polar vortex to become weaker for that cold air to move further southward and as you can see comparing um, the current snowfall extends to the average on November 13th we see that there's a lot more snow cover throughout the United States than um, there are than what's typical during November 13th which means that we're more likely in for a much snowier winter because uh, um, the reason why we're seeing this large amount of snow extent is as a result of a weaker polar vortex um, so it's more likely than not we're going to see this weak polar vortex extend into the winter months which will allow more snowstorms and cold air to move into the United States this winter of course increasing the amount of days you'll experience snow cover 
covered throughout the northern portion of the United States. So this is definitely a huge data point, which um, makes me believe that we're going to be in for a lot more snow cover or um, having um, that we're going to have um, many more days with snow cover um, throughout the United States, thanks to the fact that we're more likely going to experience a weaker polar vortex and a negative North Atlantic oscillation. Now, Taking a look at what's going to happen during a North Atlantic oscillation, I do apologize that the resolution is a little bit low, but during a negative um, phase, we do see that there's a lot more um, there's a lot more of a pronounced jet stream dip during a negative North Atlantic oscillation, where we see colder and snowier conditions, um, especially more focused in right around northeast, which will of course enhance the risk that you're going to experience a lot more snow days than average for much of the United States. But during a positive phase, we see the jet stream is a little bit further northward. The westerly winds are a little bit stronger thanks to an enhanced amount of instability as a result of this strong ridge and this strong trough that's right centered right around Greenland. So as a result, we see less of that cold air meander for a southward and pretty much stay trapped right around the polar regions. That's expected not to be the case this winter as more likely than not, we're more likely to experience a negative North Atlantic oscillation thanks to the reason I just stated which is a larger amount of snow extent we're seeing throughout the northern hemisphere at this time so that's something something to keep in mind and I think that will definitely enhance the risk that you're going to experience a lot more days of snow cover throughout the United States now um, take a look at the current drought monitor for the United States another big role when in determining how much snow not only how much snow depth you're about to experience this winter but how many snow um how many snow days or uh, at least how many days of snow cover you will experience for the united states and as you can see as of november 10th still majority of the united states is under a drought i do still expect the northwestern portion of the united states to get out of drought despite the fact that you guys are under a severe drought thanks to the fact that during la nina we typically do see more chops move into the pacific northwest but for the southern united states i still do expect the drought to stay around mainly because during la nina we typically see drier and warmer than average conditions right around the southwestern portion of the united states so the la La Nina conditions will only exacerbate the drought further southward, which of course will limit the days you'll um, have snow cover throughout the southern United States, which is why I do believe for much of northern United States, you will experience more days of snow cover, but for the southern United States, you're bound to experience less days of snow cover. So that's only something to keep in mind as well. And for the eastern half of the United States, I've been saying this in my previous videos, but I do believe that the eastern half of the United States, pretty much anywhere east of the Mississippi River Valley, will experience more jet stream dips thanks to the fact that we're more likely going to be in for a positive Pacific um, oscillation where we do see a big ridge right around the western half of the United States. And that big ridge is more likely to create a big bump in the jet stream further westward for a major dip in the jet stream to occur further eastward because of course the jet stream can't be bumped up this long without having an area where it could dip down so i do believe that we're going to see more jet stream dips as a result of this big ridge located right around the western half of the united states which i will which i believe will enhance the amount will increase the amount of days you'll experience snow cover throughout the northeast this winter and um compared to average now um, take a look at my forecast when it comes to the amount of days you'll experience snow cover in the United States and pretty much the threshold of snow cover is at least one inch of snow depth or more because of course when we see less than an inch on the surface and it's sometimes there's sometimes patchy spots it doesn't necessarily feel like uh, complete snow cover unless there's one inch of snow on the ground so here's my forecast i based my forecast on the typical average but i did make some adjustments to it based on the fact of what the areas that are bound to experience a more active winter when it comes to snow or a less active winter i did adjust it a little bit so it's more in line of what we're bound to experience this winter um, compared to average and for um, pretty much if you're in the red you should expect 85 plus days of snow cover which for a lot of these areas that's um, what you typically experience however uh, that anywhere that's maybe just to the east of the north dakota montana border that 85 degree area is a little bit further southward this year which means that in a lot of areas along the border you should experience more days of snow cover than usual thanks to the fact that 
I do believe this winter will be more active than usual when it comes to snowstorms and colder than usual, especially throughout the Great Lakes region where we're bound to see more jet stream dips. And then just south of that, I'm expecting 55 to 85 days of um, of snow cover. So this includes big cities such as Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Des Moines. I do, and in a lot of these areas, that's more snow days of snow cover than you typically experience. Because like I said, I do believe that um, much of the eastern half of the United States will experience a quarter winter. So that's only something to keep in mind. Just out that, I'm expecting 40 to 55 days of snow cover. Um, this includes cities um, like New York City and right up along the coast of Connecticut, a large portion of Pennsylvania as well, Indianapolis, and just north north of St. Louis, you should expect at least 40 to 55 days of snow cover this winter, which is more than usual um, anywhere that's just at the east of the Mississippi River Valley. Um, and then just south of that, expect 20 to 40 days of snow cover, um, and then 20 to 28 just uh, south of that. And then if you're in the lighter green, um, you should expect 7 to 20 days of snow cover. Of course, the uh, days of snow cover reduces the further south you go, the warmer it gets the easier the snow melts uh, and of course there's less of a chance you're going to experience a snowstorm and then one to seven days just to the south of that as it's just north of the dallas area and atlanta maybe could get involved with one or two days of snow cover this winter um once a snowstorm moves this far south which is certainly possible this winter um and you should expect at least one to seven days of snow cover throughout nevada excepting the arizona and new mexico as well so definitely be aware of that throughout the northern throughout the united states but if you want even more in detail forecasts regarding the amount of snow um the uh the date amount of days you should experience snow cover this winter in your civic location just make sure to comment down below and i'll make sure to give you guys an in detail forecast regarding the amount of days of snow cover you should experience this winter in your civic location so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day